Computerized Start is brought to you by my awesome patrons on Patreon. And by your tips and memberships on coffee. These and other channel supporters make my live streams possible. You too can become a channel supporter with tiers starting at just $1. And as always, thank you for all your support, including sharing, chatting, liking, and subscribing. Now roll that famous logo animation! Good evening and welcome back to the channel. I hope everyone enjoyed the brand new intro video. I'd like to welcome Jay and Joe and would like to give a dishonorable mention to YouTube signing me out on this computer. But at least the intro video worked, so that's a plus. All right. I think it is time to get right into this. Well, I think it is time to get right into this because I have my Amiga. And I don't know why the screen looks upside down because that's weird. All right, let me fix that because rotate 180 degrees. No, it was right the first time. Never mind. Transform. Yeah, okay. It was right the first time. I was just looking at the wrong thing. All right. So now you're looking at my perspective, which is what I intended. I have the Amiga on the workbench because it actually never moved off the workbench from last week. I have the mouse innards still here on the bench. I have not done much of anything to the Amiga except order parts. So I have a box from Mauser. with chips and more chips. And I'm just waiting till I run into something for this project where Mauser says, no, you can't have any. But apparently they let me order 74 LS 157Ns and LM 339s. So I don't know what's to blame. I don't know if it's this chip here or this chip here or some chip in here. But, at least for two of the three, I have the chips. Now, of course, the other reason I was delayed in streaming, not only did YouTube sign me out, but I was actually trying to find my 14-pin sockets. Because that is a 14-pin chip, unless I miscounted. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, I miscounted. That is a 16-pin chip. Well, then I don't need to look any further because I did find my 16 pin sockets. Yeah, all right. We're good. Well, maybe the reason I didn't have any 14 pin sockets is because I'd yet to use any 14 pin chips. Well, hi VHS, welcome and congratulations again. I will get your pie out to you as soon as I can. So, I, I do have a few other things for troubleshooting because I, oh, okay, there we go, that'll work. Because I ordered some cables at the suggestion of people last stream. So if I need to pull out the oscilloscope, I have no idea if either of these are any good. I couldn't get exactly what I wanted, but 
I got some cheap clips, clipsy doodles, and some more cheap clipsy doodles. And those aren't quite what I was expecting, but anyways. Oh, um, no, VHS, I did not see your suggestion last night uh, because I did leave the stream shortly afterwards. Hi, Alex, welcome. Let's see here. Oh, there was one other thing I did want to let everyone know, but uh, let me just scoot the Amiga motherboard back a little bit. And if you look carefully, you'll notice that I have the keyboard plugged in because I made an astonishing discovery. I think it was Tuesday night. I was trying to run sysinfo to try to figure out if the Amiga was seeing the DKB Insider 1 Meg board, which by the fact that it's not plugged in, you can probably tell it was not seeing it. And I wanted to get it out of my way again. But in order to see, to click the memory button, I was like, well, I can't move the mouse. Is there some way, other way to move the mouse cursor? And I realized that there is an Amiga key sequence that you can use. Let's see if I've got the right input selected. Oh, I do. Let's see here, transform, reset transform. There we go, that should be better. Oh. But anyways, let me boot the Amiga. Yes, there is a reveal coming. And this reveal is brought to us by Contact Cleaner. So the moral of this reveal is next time I plug something in in a live stream and that object has been in an attic for 30 years and it doesn't work when I plug it in. Someone please, if I don't pull the can of contact cleaner out, would someone please remind me to spray the contact cleaner on all the contacts on the object that didn't work. <laughs> um, because you could use the Amiga key plus the arrow keys to move the mouse cursor. It's not the greatest, but let's see, is that over? because then I can actually click the left mouse button and, ah, there we go. I can see how much memory the Amiga sees. Yeah. <laughs> so anyways, that is the, that is the big reveal. Uh, the keyboard is working more than I thought it was. Um, I, I actually, I sprayed the contacts on both ends of the cable and the contacts in the keyboard and the keyboard is still disgustingly dirty, but at least it works. So I will set it off to the side. Yes, in Windows that would be called mouse keys. I don't know what Amiga called, uh, Commodore called it, but Something I learned, Amiga key plus the arrow keys. Now, I don't know how you click the mouse button with the keyboard. I never figured that out, but 
I at least got the the mouse cursor to work to be able to do a few things in sysinfo. Uh, also, if you don't plug the the memory expansion board in the front of the Amiga in properly, you will probably get a guru meditation. So, yeah. I, I pulled the DKB Insider board off because I wasn't sure if that, it was the cause of the guru meditation in sysinfo, but it turns out it was the improperly inserted front memory board, so. All right, so the first thing I am going to do is because I had pulled up the schematics and the mouse port comes in here and the directional signals from the mouse go through this chip here, which is a 74LS157, which I believe is a, a four bit multiplexer or something like that. And then it goes on to the Denise chip, I think, through some circuitous path. But anyway, since those four signals go through this chip and they're not working, I think the problem might be this chip. But it could be the mouse. So that's why I bought chips for both. And I'm going to have to desolder this chip. That's also why I wanted sockets, because I want to replace it with a socket. Because I'm going to pull this chip out. And then I discovered that my Mini Pro can test it. So we'll pop that chip in and see if it's good or bad. But I'm going to try a new chip anyways. Yes, at least it's Jelly Bean Logic. So my Mauser order came in today that I placed Tuesday because I forgot to place it last week. So I have some 74LS 157s, brand new from Texas Instruments. Should be, it's a 74LS157N, but I think it should work in place of the P chip. So we're gonna, it's gonna go ahead and desolder that chip off the board. Should be a fairly easy operation, complicated by trying to make sure it's in frame. Somewhat in frame, maybe a little bit in frame. I'll have to move things in frame. There we go. Yes, at least it's standard logic uh, and While I wait for my desoldering vacuum to warm up, I will mention that if you notice that things look a little different during this stream, it is because I am actually streaming directly to YouTube. And also, I did set a new goal on coffee for the month. Since it's a new month, I guess my coffee goal for this month will actually be to get some things, will help me get things for next month's project. Because next month is July, and at the end of July, or well, middle to end of July comes Kansas Fest. And I believe the Apple II fans are plotting to do some Apple II related content to kind of lead up to Kansas Fest. I have two Franklins and they need some work and I am going to work on those in July, even though I won't be at Kansas Fest, unless I can finagle virtually visiting, but I will at least participate in that Apple II fun. And YouTube is complaining at me. So, all right, ah, and my desoldering gun is about warmed up. 
If it wasn't for the fact it has a noisy fan in it, I would have warmed it up sooner. Oh, it's, oh, GPU June now? Oh. Well. Uh, I don't know that I have anything for GPU June. I don't have any fun GPUs. Oh, wait. I have the VGA card that Thomas sent me. You know, I'll have to put that together this month. But I have all the parts for that, so... All right, let me just double check that this is the correct part and the correct pins. Yes, it is. I've got fooled because there is a resistor pack beside it. All right. Also, I think I'm going to nickname my vacuum station Caldog. Because it sounds like Caldog. All right. Well, some of these I'm going to have to add some solder to. If anyone knows where I could get me a cow dog sticker, I would be interested. I will plaster one on my soldering sta desoldering station. Uh, all right. For some reason, this other side of solder is just being persnickety. All right. Let's see here. Let me just add some solder. here and it was this one is a bit really desolder there we go all right Whoa, that was not good. All right, hopefully that was just the solder mask. Uh, these pins are bent. These pins are like bent something fierce. Let me see, do I have... Yeah, I cleaned my workbench and now I'm regretting it because I can't find anything. There we go. That's not what I really want, though. There we go. All right. Let me see if I can gently bend these pins just a little bit.
All right. And I'll have to check this, but I think it looks like I just got the solder mask, so I think it's probably fine, but I will have to check that swath of the board now. Let's see here. Feels like there's still solder somewhere. Or the pins are bent. Ah, there's still solder in that one. All right, let me try some solder wick. All right, we got that. Hello, Retro Tech or Die, welcome. Ah, all right, I will have to check that out, Joe. Anything to keep from losing control of the desoldering gun. Ah, still some solder in it. Let's see. On this side of the board. Uh, I might. Oh. Try now, Vintage Hillbilly Shack. Yes, it is one nice thing about The way I'm streaming, it is a little easier to do things on the YouTube side. 
granted I have YouTube Studio open on the one monitor. Let's see here. I am going to have to do, I was trying to desolder without adding flux because that can gum up the desoldering station, but I don't think I'm going to be able to avoid that. Uh, yes, Joe, that it gives better video quality. It also gives better audio quality. The uh, new intro I made, the bit rate that I was had to use to get it to work with StreamYard was too low, so the music sounded bad. So I just went direct for YouTube. I'm actually going to try a service that'll let me multi-stream. I forget what it's called though, but they charge like $6.99 a month plus bandwidth. It would let me multi-stream to Twitch because I do get the occasional Twitch viewer. Because do I have a hot air station? I do, but it's there is no room for it on my bench. All right. Yeah. Well, the the problem isn't necessarily my the size of my bench, but it's a combination of the size of my bench and the size of the Amiga motherboard. All right, and it looks like I still have my uh, desoldering gun is the tip of it is smoking, probably from the flux. So I am, uh, there we go. I guess I'll turn it off while I. All right. Now I really have. Yeah, I, I probably should try to make some room for the hot air station. But I don't know if you can probably are getting the idea from the fact that the board is seemingly at a weird angle right now that.
I am having space issues on my desk right now. Okay. So is this chip even remotely loose? Oh. Nope, because I see solder on it still. No, it's almost like I'm going to have to, uh... Uh, yes, Joe, I'm using Flux with the desoldering gun because I was afraid I was going to destroy things, and, well, it looks like I'm still bent on destroying things because I just melted plastic on the desoldering gun. Uh, um, is there a wall in front of you and behind the camera? Yes, technically, yes, there is a wall in front of me and behind the camera. Well, uh, yeah, but now I've got molten plastic and I don't want to put this on its rest, so I'm, I'm answering questions. However, the wall that is in front of me and behind the camera is four feet away. So, all right. I am just making a huge mess tonight. Well, I melted the corner of my view, uh, smoke absorber. Yeah, I, I, I put, I put a gap between the wall and the bench on purpose. And I, I don't know if the purpose was good, but well, I did it on purpose. All right. Now, the reason I used solder flux, even though I was using a vacuum desolder pump, which yeah, I realize that's not good for it, is because I really am I was really worried about the amount of time I'm putting heat on this board. I'm trying not to have to repair traces. Hi Chris, yeah, the Amiga's making repairs impossible. I really should, I really need to pull my hot air onto my bench, but this Amiga board's so big, I don't have room on my bench for it. And of course the solder is not coming out easily because it's old. All right, let me try the Let me try the manual solder sucker. I don't know that's gonna do anything better, but it at least doesn't have molten plastic on it at the moment. At least not yet. Wait. Put this Put the pump on the joint, wait half a second, and watch the so oh. <laughs> and do little 360 motions while pulling the trigger. Do not push down into the joint.
Uh, that actually is what I was trying to do. Yeah. Well, the, the move pump has plastic on the handle, which I have no idea how I'm going to remove. Probably by destroying something else. Uh. All right, I guess I'll, I'll deal with the burning plastic smell. <laughs> Hi, Angular Momentum, welcome. I'm just, I'm having technical difficulties seemingly. All right, well. I don't, I don't know that I recommend this approach, but now I have uh, charring plastic on the handle of my desolder pump. These things are complicated. And I'm getting sidetracked by the fact that I've got like smoke 10 ways from Sunday on this coming off this thing. That's not the that that was the right one for the tip. Okay, the tip's fine. Well, Joe, it's not the plastic I'm worried about. It's Trying to avoid setting off the smoke detectors from burning plastic. Yeah, there's solder on top there. And I can't really, I can't really get, I can't really get anything in here really well because that resistor pack is in the way. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, I, I know, flux wick and iron, but
the I'm in order for you all to see things I have to put this board at angles where I am having trouble seeing this particular part of the board because of that resistor pack that I don't really want to remove because it does not appear to be marked. And also, I'm just getting, at this point, as much heat as I've put on this board, I'm getting really worried about traces and pads, and I'll just be honest with you. I am... You may have to pull the... Push the chip back and forth across its length. Length. Nope, not feeling anything crack there, Joe. I, I, I really, really do not want to remove that res resistor pack. It's... I, I am already afraid I'm causing damage. I'm unsubstantiated fear at this point, but... I was hoping to test this chip to see if it was actually bad, but at this point, as much heat as I put on this chip, I, well, I don't know that even trying that test is going to, would do anything useful. All right. Uh, uh, angular momentum, I, uh, um, I was desoldering from the other side, but I got solder on this side of the board. So I'm, I'm desoldering from both sides of the board. Uh, actually, Joe, I think in this case it's worse than that. Not only did they not deflare the the pins probably, but then they bent the pins on the bottom, of all 16 pins on the bottom of the board in so that it would stay in the socket. In fact, I'll, uh, I'll get the vacuum desolder pump out here. Oh, might as well try it. Anyway, if if you can see, hi Bruce. I I, I know Joe. I'm I'm I, the chip is not moving. It's there's still solder solder. There's still solder here to, uh, okay. Now maybe I can try moving the chip again. Yeah, I'm 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 trying, Joe. I'm I'm trying. I, I know I know you want to help, Joe. I I if I had a transporter, I would uh, beam you into the basement in a second and.
There is So it might be hard to see, but uh, there is solder. I can see solder on this side of the board, on this pin here. And actually on these two pins. And, oh, I'm already scratching the solder mask off there. I mean, I've, I've added solder, I've tried to remove solder, I've added solder, I've tried to remove solder. Oh, Joe, this is what they did to all the chips. Most of the chips look like this where they bent pins. In fact, sometimes they even bent them in different directions, probably because they were uh, just thinking about who would be trying to repair this board in the future. I know solder mask can be fixed, Joe. It's the traces I'm worried about. I'm not good at repairing traces. I know I got to learn at some point, but <laughs> this is not the board I want to learn on. <laughs> I just want the mouse to work tonight. <sighs> Okay, I know. That, that is quite possibly why I'm having so much trouble getting this chip out is because the legs were bent in two different directions. I mean, it looks like I've got most of the solder out on that side and I'm, I'm just having a no soldering station. I want you to turn back on. I'm not done with you. Well, Joe, I, I know that, well, I don't know that the chip is bad. I wanted to test it. I really did want to test it. Hi, Adam. But this chip is just not, it's not budging. I, I might have to clip it because at this point I've done I'm trying not to let it get to me, but it's the the thing is I've I've already I already did this tonight. I don't I don't think I went through the solder mask, but still I'm that made me a nervous wreck, and now I'm. <sighs> Not sure my vacuum pump doesn't have a clog in it. All right, well, I'm, I'm, uh, oh, there, maybe there is a clog in my, Okay, maybe maybe I do have a clog in the desolder pump. It won't matter in five years. You're right, Chris. It won't matter in five years. Take a flat bladed screwdriver. Uh, yeah. Okay, first let me let me take care of this because it feels like it's Got a clog.
Well, if I can get the uh, tube out. Come on. You know, maybe I should turn it off and remove this because that is blazing hot on the end. Okay, let me let me let that cool down so I can safely. Can I get you a closer shot to the joints? Um, I think that is. I think that is as close as. That's as close as I can zoom in without going to nausea, Cam. Don't say I didn't warn you. Yeah, they did look pretty clear on this side. All right. That's not clear. That's not clear. That's not clear. That's not clear. Okay, I, I'll, I'll try it. It looks like there's an awful lot of solder though in those. Okay. Let me let me try the The only thing is I have I have one spudger. If I melt it, that's it. Well, if you want to use the wick on those pins, wick a single pin at a time and just Hang out on the pin. Okay. Well, I think I would rather try some wick first. Because it seemed like there's a lot of solder on that pin. All right. Well, except now I've got the wick stuck to the pin. Uh, well, that looks better. Actually, actually, maybe I'm, I don't know that I can really get down there. <sighs> Spudgers are cheap. Except I'm picky about my spudgers.
Okay. Azodium. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. Well, you know, this is... All right, let me see if I can... Nope, that's... Well, okay, I might see the problem with my desoldering vacuum, but... I'm having trouble getting the tube out. Oh yeah, there's a blob of solder on the end of the, I don't know that I, take the chip, give it a hot bath, then wrap a towel around it. Okay. Can I make my desk any less? Spacious. Um, I'm all right because I'd like to get this chip out in one piece to probably prove that I've killed it in the process of removing it. I'll get the hot air station and I'll find a place to put it on my desk. But first, let me see if I can find the spare parts for my uh, desolder station because I think I might have just removed the clog, but I need a I need one of the filters that came with it. There we go. I disintegrated the filter in the process of trying to clean it. Okay.
All right, not sure if I'm going to be able to put it back together because the end of it is still really hot. Oh. Well, that's not good. And I think it might have just... Okay, this is the most captivating... Oh, there we go. That might, might have almost done it. Nope. Almost. Okay. I think I got it clean. All right. Uh, no, it was. I think it was clogged on the the uh, filter side. It had this lovely solder stalactite. That I think was pretty much covering the end of it. Although it still sounds clogged for some reason. Okay. Let me now that I got that. I'm gonna let it heat up. Oh, sorry, Chris. I No, I didn't get the reference and I feel ashamed now. But sometimes life moves too fast. Uh, or my brain moves too slow, one. Okay. Did I know there's... Yeah, there are a couple big holes in my PCB. Uh, let's see here. More solder than lots of flux. Uh, yeah, I've, um, yeah, I disconnected the vacuum hose and pulled the trigger, and it. Let me. I'm gonna do that again. So that's what it sounds like. Well, maybe, maybe it is, maybe it's. All right, let me give it one more try and then I'll go get the hot air and I'll give hot air a try. And if that doesn't work, I'm just gonna clip the leads and uh, then say, I found the problem. That well, might actually be working better. Yep, it's an LS-157. Yep, 
Yep. Mm. LS-157s are bog standard chips that cost an arm and a leg these days. Okay. Okay. <sighs> okay. Hot air station. Okay, I got hot air. I have, well, I'm actually trying to find my, well, I was trying to find my not so good IC pullers. Cause I don't want to melt the handle of my good ones. Yeah, I just bought the widest capped on tape because it would cover the most scenarios. When, you, when your YouTube channel's small and you can afford one roll, you just get the, the big one. Yay! All right, the chip is out. I mean, I mean, seriously, the reason why I didn't do that is because my workbench is full. It's beyond full. I'm probably actually going to have to unplug that because it's now sitting in a very bad position. And I think it was being prevented from coming out by two thought a very little bit of solder in two of the holes. Ah, and it's actually the two two that looked fine, but aren't. Let me see if I I'm trying to see which side is better for removing that solder. Actually, I bet I can. I bet those are actually clear enough to put the new socket in place just right now. Yeah, look at that. Just enough solder to keep the chip from coming out, but not enough to, to prevent the socket from going in. The other nice thing about using this wide Kapton tape is I now can, I can reuse it. It's now my IC socket holder. I'll go ahead and I might need to add a little more flux. Yeah, I'm gonna need to add flux. 
Knight's Flux is sample 88 to counteract the smell of burnt plastic on my desolder vacuum pump. All right. And I guess I'll have a goal this month. Maybe I'll try to rearrange my workbench so that I can keep the hot air station on it. How's that for a monthly, a, month, a goal for the month? Okay, why is this not... Why is my solder not flowing? Huh. Well, let's see. I've got flux. The soldering iron is on. I just dropped something. Interesting. Uh, oh, hi, Ron. I was wondering why people were shouting Ron in the chat. All right, I'm going to put even more flux on this. And I'm going to clip the end of the solder off because... I don't know. Something's wrong with it. Okay. And my soldering iron is on. I think. Well, the LED's on. I think that means it's on. All right. Why does the solder not want to flow? Okay, that, that. Ah, uh, that's just weird. All right. No, it's, it's solder. It definitely is my leaded solder. I don't know. Okay, I'll try it again. That, that solder just, I don't know what it was. That solder did not it was not flowing down the via. It, it just coagulated on the end of the lead of the, the socket. And these are not like, these are, TE connectivity sockets. So I do know that there are at least some generally respectable Socket manufacturer. All right. Same company, new. Ah. Okay. Let's try this again. Hmm. <coughs> Um. I don't know. I 
Something just feels weird in the way... Uh, my iron is set to 750 degrees Fahrenheit. And actually the solder will melt. If I touch the, the solder to the tip of the soldering iron, which I probably should not do over the Amiga board, it will melt instantly. It's just, it's not flowing. It was not flowing on the board for some reason because now it's now it's gone. Try to go to yeah, no, it, it's okay. Now this side is actually flowing a little better. All right, and it looks, oh, I'll probably have to check it. Okay, it looks possibly okay. Let me, oh wait. All right, let me try to catch up on chat here. Um, oh. Yeah, I usually set my stations to Fahrenheit because that's what I've always used for soldering. Probably much to the annoyance of every country that doesn't use Imperial units. All right. Well, I guess the joints look okay, maybe. We'll see. I'll probably have to... Probably will have to check them with a multimeter. But first... All right, let's see here. Any pro programmer, which you're not going to be able to see because. There we go. 
So I do know that you can, because I'm curious. All right, 74. B one seventy four. There we go. All right. So I do have my Mini Pro, Pro plugged in. I've got it here in front of me. So the original chip that is stuck to my workbench. That's weird. I'm going to put it in and. Ha! Test error. Yeah, that. That. Seventy four LS. Oh. Oh. Uh. Double click on the wrong chip type. That's weird. I don't know why I've wanted 174. Okay. Ah, test normal. That's lovely. No, actually it looks, well, according to the Mini Pro, it's a good chip. Therefore, I'm going to put a new chip in anyways. Because it's possible it's still a bad chip. Besides, it's all gross and everything now because it's caked with solder flux. All right. Let me kind of spin the pins, put it in the socket. Hopefully, we'll go right into the socket. Uh-oh. Ah. Okay. Well, let's try another chip. I bent the pins sideways while trying to straighten them and because I bought 10 chips and for the interest of time I will just try another chip instead of trying to fix my giant oopsie. All right. Ah. <sighs> Oh. Well, that's not good. Well. Huh. Oh, you can't see what I'm doing at all. As I knock everything off the workbench. All right, so I... I'm trying to put the chip into the socket I just installed and 
the, the chip will not press down into the socket. It did that number. I think I have solder in the socket. Okay. That's the original chip. Which I have to clean the. Well, oh, those legs are kind of bent up. Those legs are really bent up. Okay. Okay, um so, what is going on with the socket? I think there's something wrong with my socket. Uh, I just did put contact cleaner in it and the um, the chips are they're they just don't want to go in the socket. The pins want to bend out, not go in. It's really weird. It's almost like the socket knew that I was already getting uh, worried about the board and decided that it was going to fail. <sighs> I think. You know, I think, I think I got soldered down into the sockets. I will have to remove it because it's, uh, it's act, it feels like they're soldering the, one of the, the sockets because I, I cannot push the chip down. It will not go in. Yeah, I did. I, I did do that on both chips. That they are not going into the socket. I mean, I. This is just—it's really weird. I, it's. All right, let's. Well, I don't know what solder in the socket looks like, but that looks like I managed to wick solder up into the socket.
I mean, I'll, uh, I'll give the chat a moment to see if anyone uh, concurs or says I'm crazy, but that really looks like solder in, that I wicked solder up into it. All right. All right. Oh. oh. Sorry. I don't I can I can't hold it still but for so long before I want to appease the people getting bored of really bad photography and just do something. It looks like I might have flux down in there, but I don't have Now maybe that one's not, maybe that's just flux. Let me go to one of these other ones that was. Okay, maybe that's. Okay, now that, that I think is solder right there. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Okay. I think that socket knew that I was getting worried about this board and decided to just say, okay, you're worried. So I'm just going to fail on you. And yeah, I'll suffer the consequences of using flux later. All right. Yep, that just came right out. All right. Let me. I don't know. Let me scrub the board really good with some isopropyl alcohol. Before I put another socket on.
I don't know what happened to that socket, but... Okay. Try another one. Using a little hot air to get the isopropyl alcohol to dry a little quicker. Okay, let me try another socket. Okay, so notch goes towards, let's see, this goes towards the side of the, or the front side of the board. Let's see, I need something to hold that down. Um, here. Let's use a little blue tack this time around. Oh, well, the blue tack doesn't want to stick to the board. All right, maybe I've got... Ah, nope. Blue tack is not working. Oh. Okay, use some Kapton tape. So far I have seemingly with the Mini Pro found that the old chip was Good, although I guess not necessarily good at whatever rate the Amiga tries to clock it at. So I've had chips test good before with it, but the chip just didn't work in actual usage. All right, I'm going to. I think I'm, I'm going to try the uh, old flux I was using because all right clean the tip all right let's try
Okay, now that's strange. Well, maybe whatever these pins are coated with, they didn't like sample 88 because, yeah, my old solder flux is flowing much better. There we go. That actually looked, that actually went much better. All right. Okay, I'm just not going to tally up how much each of these chips cost me because I don't want to think about that right now. All right, so I'm going to try yet another one of these new chips. I'm tempted to put it in the Mini Pro just to demonstrate that it is a good chip. Not that the test seems to be Nope, oh, that's not the right one. Nope. Oh. Okay, so the new chip is tests good. All right. Now I'm going to try to push the chip in the socket and it went right in. Easy as that. Okay, so I now have a new 157 chip on the board given the fact that it's already 1120. And I have too many things on my bench at the moment to even try to pull any more meters or scopes out to test things. I'm just going to I'm just going to power it up, see what happens. I'm not going to bother with the keyboard or the front RAM expansion board. Oh. I have the wrong input. Hold on. Technical difficulties. All right, so I've got the There we go. Must have not had something plugged in all the way. All right, so it's booting kickstart.
All right. Wait a minute. Well, I'm able to move the mouse down with the mouse. But I can't move it up. And it's not moving. Right or left. So that. Huh. That tells me that chip might have not actually been to blame. No, I'm not sure the mouse is good. The mouse might be totally bad. I, I did try to test it with this uh, voltmeter last time. But, and the mouse seemed to be working correctly, but I, I really don't know if it is working correctly. I also didn't know if that chip was working correctly. It's just that chip was easier to remove than the one in the mouse because the, the problem with the one in the mouse is The, it's got some capacitors that are like really close to the pins. And um, hairballs. No, I think I've cleaned the hairballs out. Joe, I will take you up on that offer if I strike out on further diagnosis. And don't otherwise buy a Mouse simulator. I uh, okay. I think I got the hairballs out of it. I am powering up the oscilloscope and trying to find the things that I knocked off my bench. Oh wait. Why do I always knock things off the bench and under the table? Oh, there they are. All right. So, I, I've powered up the oscilloscope. I need to find some jumper wires that I know I have down here. because I was not able to get I was I wanted to get these that had male pins on the end but I couldn't so All right. So I need one of those cuz I think those will actually grab the pin and then I need one of these to try to clip onto a grant uh, neutral point. All right. That's to give me a pin to 
step on with the ground lead. All right. Actually, I might be able to use two of those. Okay. So I have to, oh yeah, we'll, we'll talk to you later, Adam. Yeah, the mechanical parts of the mouse are moving freely. I, I can see the little encoder wheels turn and they're turning freely. Um, let's see if the, Let's see if the circuit actually looks right on the oscilloscope. Because while I, I didn't mind so much putting a, a socket on the Amiga, which I guess I will have to just double, I'll check continuity. But I, I don't want, I, I can't, I can't socket the mouse because there's not enough room. So if I have, if I have to replace the chip on the mouse, it's going to have to go. I'll have to, I will have to solder the chip directly onto the mouse because there's not room for a socket. Or at least not room for a normal height socket. Okay, so. Ground is going to be pin 12. Uh, here. And one out one is pin one. And it would help if I actually counted correctly. So that's pin 12. All right, so I'm going to put the oscilloscope on the four outputs. I don't know exactly which is which. But we should see something. All right. Oh, that's right. All right. Well, that. All right, let me do this. So pin three is five volts. I'm going to auto set with channel two at five volts. All right. And now. And now let me manually set the time base. Okay. I think it... Okay, so it looks like output one is All right, 10 milliseconds. Uh, 
we're looking at in, input two. So I'm manually turning the wheel and input two, output two, output one, which is connected to input two of the oscilloscope is going between zero and five volts. So I think that is correct. All right, pin, pin two of the chip here is, that's output two. And it's pulsing. It's pulsing, but that doesn't look right. Let's compare pin three. And the reason it didn't look right is because it seemed to only be pulsing if I moved the mouse one direction and not the other. All right, so this should be output three, and I think it's going to be for the other mouse direction, which makes sense. If I can clip the pin. Oh. And my ground lead fell off. Oh, wow. These are... Okay. These are super cheap. I don't think I'm going to recommend these clips, because... Those two clips I was just using are, have already deformed themselves from what I would consider normal usage. All right. Okay. Let's try output three and maybe a new set of clips will. Work long enough to try them. OK, so output three. I'm not even seeing any. Oh. Of course, I wasn't seeing anything. I think the clip broke. All right, so it's pulsing. Really only pulsing in one direction. And output four. Seems to be stuck high. All right, I think the uh, verdict is mouse does not appear to be working correctly. All right. Well, I guess the Okay. I guess I need to replace that chip on the mouse. And it's 11:30. Maybe I should have started with the mouse. But I think it was, I think it was probably pretty much guaranteed that no matter what I started with, I'd end up having to do something to the other board too. All right.
Okay. This was... All right. Unfortunately, I know that some folks have suggested that I upgrade this tank mouse to the optical mouse because there's an optical mouse upgrade for the Amiga tank mouse. But unfortunately, it's for the version of the tank mouse that has the buttons on the main board. I have the, the tank mouse I have has the separate buttons, so there is no optical upgrade path that's pre-made. And I don't have the desire to try to take that presumably open source project and attempt to make it for the separate tank mouse button version because that's more mechanical engineering than I want to get into. I mean, presumably it would be possible, but you'd be, well, you'd have to turn one board into two. So instead, I'm going to attempt to replace this chip on the mouse because If, if that's not it, it's the encoder wheels, and so that's a much harder repair, because first of all, I don't, know, I don't know what the part is for those sensors. Yeah, th that's the thing. If, if, if I can't repair this tank mouse, I'm just going to have to use the, the modern adapter as much as I wanted to use the tank mouse, because the tank mouse is Amiga. Nothing says Amiga more than Tank Mouse. It's just like the original. It's just like Jay and his G3s with the Puck Mouse. Oh, I think I now know. I think I know what the 14 pin part was. It was this chip. This was the 14 pin chip that I ordered. I guess that's another good reason I wasn't going to try to socket it because I don't have any 14 pin sockets. And it, w it wouldn't fit there would be a very potential clearance issue. There we go. That chip just came right out. I wonder if the TL Mini Pro can test that chip. Nope. That is not one of the supported chips. All right. All 
All right, so that chip I removed was a TA75339 P, which is pin compatible with the LM339. I think that's just Toshiba's, or I presume that's Toshiba part number for it. All right, so I have the pins lined up. I'm just going to, yes, I could modify a 16 pin one, but I would know that I did that and it would probably annoy me somewhat. Because I would inevitably uh, fight it trying to cut it nice and pretty and whatnot. But uh, the thing is, I don't think there's enough space for a socket in the mouse because the chip is right under the board with the buttons. All right. So yeah, there, there'd be a clearance issue. So yeah, so last week when I tested this chip using the voltmeter, because I didn't have any clips that would fit the oscilloscope, yeah, I can see why I thought the chip might be working, because I was seeing zero volt to five volt transitions. But unfortunately, what I would have not been able to see without the oscilloscope was that they were not happening at the pattern I would have expected. Because I think the way this works is it should probably if I had was able to clip uh, two at a time, which would require me to detangle the other oscilloscope probe, it probably looked like a, a quadrature encoder. Okay, so I think I got the chip on. So let me, yeah, I could have used those two. Uh, it, it would have just been harder to solder them on straight. And, and actually, if I'd thought about it, I would have ordered some pin headers. Because I, I, I think when I placed the order, I was more thinking of sockets are too tall. But yeah, I think that some of the pin headers would have been short enough to have worked. But I wasn't thinking pin headers. I was just thinking sockets are too tall. Um, Because I, 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 I actually just realized I have a few, but not enough. Or at, at least of the ones I would use to try to put a chip in. That, would, that actually might have been short enough that it would have just worked. Okay, so... And here, change the input, and it should be at a, there we go, kickstart prompt. I wasn't too worried about the, the mouse so much. 
Although that there were the two components that were like really close together inside of it, but yeah, uh, blue tack is good. Except I was having trouble getting the blue tack to stick tonight for some reason, which is weird. All right. And that is Yeah, that's a that's a no. All right, I'm just double checking my solder joints. Yep. It does look like I got them all. Yeah, it's still moving the same way. All right. I guess since I got nothing to lose. Oh. Yeah, it's getting late. I'm going to have to draw the stream to a close really soon. Yeah, I just thought I would try spraying some contact cleaner in in the actual sensor part of the mouse. Yeah, that's uh that didn't help. So I'm I'm wondering. Yeah, it, well, it was moving vertically really nice. Plus well, sprayed contact cleaner in it. Now I think it might just be that it's still wet. Yeah, it. So anyways, uh, the next step is try to try to see if I can find some way of telling if the oh, it'd help if I switch back to table cam. All right, I guess the next thing I need to do is try to find some way of seeing if these sensors are outputting infrared light. Uh, yeah, I, so, because that's the thing, I don't know if they are outputting any light. I'm actually not sure what their pinout is because I don't know what kind of component they are. They're yeah. If someone knows what what part or what these are, like a part number that I can look at a data sheet, because I don't think there's a marking on them then maybe I can probe them with an oscilloscope or a voltmeter. Otherwise, I guess what I need to do is see if I can, if I have any camera that is sensitive enough to infrared light that it will show up on camera. And unfortunately, I don't know, I 
don't know that I do. Yeah, it was moving really nice vertically, that's for sure. So yeah, I guess probably the next step is Maybe I'll just send this mouse to Joe and have him test it. <laughs> uh, that, either that or I'll, I'll get one of those USB mouse devices for the Amiga just so I can use a modern mouse. Because... Yeah. And let it, it's becoming... This mouse is... Increasingly coming to, if it's problems with the mouse, it's going to be problems that are going to be harder to repair. Just because these sensors are in plastic. And it looks like to get this plastic piece off, I have to desolder a whole bunch of things. Because I think the components, these components are actually holding that plastic part on. Yeah, because I don't see the plastic uh, where the plastic piece snaps into the bottom. I think those components, and it looks like they, they have four legs each, those appear to be what's holding this on. So, yeah, I'm thinking it might just be... I, uh, oh, uh, I actually replaced both capacitors. So those are actually brand new capacitors. Uh, I did that last stream. So yeah, it unfortunately, as much as I would like to have a uh, pink mouse, this mouse just may not be the tank mouse. So, I guess if someone out there watching this has a tank mouse that they're willing to donate, I would, uh, that I would definitely not turn away a tank mouse that showed up on my door, even if it was a tank mouse that had the buttons on the main board that it, the mouse didn't work, that would at least give me a tank mouse case to make an optical mouse out of because this is not the candidate. Anyways, that I think pretty much concludes where I'm going to get, actually now the mouse is not really moving at all after spraying contact cleaner in it. So yeah, I guess, uh, Yeah, I guess that uh, pretty much concludes that I still don't know for sure whether the mouse is to blame or the mainboard's to blame because the chip that was on the Amiga mainboard tested fine and re replacing it didn't do anything different. And replacing that chip on the mouse didn't do anything, so, yep. Jury's still out on that. I cannot pin blame on either side. So, hi, Jay. I just spent two and a half hours and am none the wiser as to what's actually wrong. So, I'm going to just have to get one of those... USB mouse adapters because then at least I'll be able to test that the mouse works before using it on the Amiga. So I guess that's probably a good place to stop the stream since it's about midnight and I am going to have to put a few things away before I go to bed because if you saw the way I have things arranged on my bench, you would know why I need to put some things away before I go to bed, because 
I have things that might fall if I'm not down here. Of course, the thing is, they might have fall if I'm down here, but at least I would be here to catch them. <laughs> so, yep, it's a mouster. Um, yeah, actually, I was looking at the mouster, and there was, like, some reason why I didn't just order one, and was that because the only seller I could find was international? That might be it. I, I have no problems ordering things internationally. It's just a lot of times when I do it, the uh, international seller sends it signature required, and then I have to go, I have to go sign for it at the post office. So it, that 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 is that is actually why I usually am deterred from ordering internationally because. Uh, it, it, if it requires a signature and the seller doesn't always mention they're going to do it. And I realize it's because there are mail systems in the world that are not as reliable or honest as the postal service. So I totally get why they do it because there are postal systems that will, yeah, not be quite honest, but yeah. I probably will end up ordering one because that's a lot easier than the other option because there are also mouse adapters that only work with USB mice that support PS2 mode. Whereas I'd rather just not have to go sort through two boxes of mice to find one that supports that. So the mouster is definitely the better option because you get to use any USB mouse and it's configurable. And it'll work with an Atari if I had one. Of course, I guess some of those Amiga mouse adapters work with the Atari too. They have a little switch on them. Anyways, so yeah, I still don't have a mouse. Uh, the keyboard works, although at some point I will have a, a... Actually, for the keyboard, I will probably do a video on it because that's doing the keyboard... Uh, cleaning is not really conducive to a live stream because it needs to, because there's rust inside the keyboard, so I need to take care of that, and that will require painting with rust, rust, rust reformer paint or whatever they call it. But anyways, yes, I think it is now time to draw this stream to an end. I do would like to thank everyone for joining me. I would also like to uh, point out to Jay that if you did not catch the be very beginning of the stream where I played my brand new fancy animation, Jay, you might want to just go take another look at it. Hint, hint. And hopefully we'll get that RBV chip to you soon if it's not already on the way. Because someday I'd like my 2CI back. But on that note, I would like to wish everyone a great evening. And I am hoping that this last step in my stream goes off without a hitch. Because I set this up, set this up at the last minute. But do enjoy my brand new closing animation. Goodbye. Computerized Start is brought to you by my awesome patrons on Patreon and by your tips and memberships on Coffee. These and other channel supporters make my live streams possible. You too can become a channel supporter with tiers starting at just $1. Don't forget to smash that like button. And if you've liked what you've seen, Subscribe and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next video or live stream. And as always, thank you for all your support. I hope to see you next time. And until then, take care.